Hey guys, today I'll be showing you a vlog of how I scratch build a electric balsa glider. So follow along, you might pick up some hints and tips and you'll see some flight footage at the end. So let's get going. You can see here I've built up a square section onto the end of the carbon fibre rod. This is to give me a nice starting point to start building the rest of the fuselage. The fuselage is coming along nicely now. The simple construction method I've used is a butt joint with a triangular piece in the middle. And that construction line there shows you which material I'll be removing. That'll enable me to get a nice round fuselage. Using smaller sections going towards the back, that will also enable me to get a teardrop shape tapering down to almost nothing at the rear. To give you a better idea of the different section sizes I've used, you can see here as they get smaller going towards the back. And there's the carbon fibre rod there, which is of course this rod here. I've gone ahead and given it a quick rough carve with one of these knives. You can see the round section and the small sections tapering off to nothing at the back. Just like that. It's of course very rough and it will be smooth when it's finished. For making the wing ribs, I've made a template on each side out of some aluminium and run two bolts through with some nuts holding it nice and tight. Once you've done that, you basically remove the material like that until you get it down close to the shape of this uh, plate here and then a bit of a light sand and you'll end up with a nice shape. Once you're done shaping and sanding, you'll end up with a whole bunch of identical pieces just like this. Now that my wing ribs are all cut out, I've gone ahead and glued them to the leading edge piece using the plan as a guide, holding them in place with a pin to ensure the glue and the piece doesn't move around while it's drying. The four holes here are for the carbon fibre tube which will form the joining tube for the wing. The top and bottom leading edges are next and for that I'll be using some 1mm thick balsa. Now don't worry if it looks flexible because the construction method I use will make the wing nice and stiff. The top and bottom leading edges are on now. When you do that you want to make sure you put something straight along the rear edge. That'll make sure the rear is all in proper alignment. You don't need to worry about the alignment of the front as this notch in here keeps them all straight. One thing I forgot to do was put in this wing joining tube. Uh, it's best to do that before you either put the top or the bottom leading edge in. as It's just easier to get access to glue it properly. And I like to use 30 minute epoxy to put that in. I like to put a thick bit of bolter at the end of this tube and that stops the main wing joining tube sliding through and damaging that rib. Now you might have noticed these two thick wing ribs that are close together. That's going to form one half of the polyhedral joint. To get the angle of the joint I've used two of these trailing edge pieces on opposite sides and when those two halves are butt together you get the nice polyhedral angle. So the wing at this stage is starting to get stiff this way but as you can see there's still a fair amount of twist in it. Now to get around that, cut a whole bunch of these rectangles that will fit in between each one of those ribs. What that will do is create a triangular box section which is very stiff and it's great for twist resistance. So here's what it looks like after you've filled in all those pieces. And we come across to the one half of the polyhedral joint with a little bit of bolster there for a bit of extra support. And that shows you the angle you get when you use two of those trailing edge pieces. For the wing tip, to get the angle I want, I've got some 45 degree stock attached right to the end of the wing. And for the wing tip itself, just some normal 6mm balsa in an appropriate size to get the shape that I want. Once that's done, you'll have something that looks like this. Just a quick note about the wing tips. Once you've trimmed your second wing to match your first wing, rule a line down the centre of it, and that'll give you a good centre point to make sure that when you uh, add the foil shape to it, it'll remain parallel to the wing. Now that the wings are pretty much complete, the next step is to mark where the joining tube is going to be drilled through. I use a drill press to do that, and then you can start shaping the fuselage to match when the wing butts up against it. The rudder is fairly simple. Just simply glued together some strips of 6mm balsa 
that'll of course need to be trimmed you need to put the center line on the leading edge and the trailing edge that'll be a guide for your shape this piece that the hinged section goes on is solid because that's where the servos are going to be mounted and also it needs to have a bit of wood for the hinges to go on the slot at the bottom is of course where the carbon fiber is going to be joined the construction method for the horizontal tail is pretty much the same from here to here is all moving the same on the other side the hinged portion is between these two joints once it's all made up I can cut I'll continue this join cut that leading edge there and there and that'll enable this whole back section to pivot separately from the portion that will be attached to the tail when you're gluing your joining tube into your fuselage it's a good idea to make sure the tube you use is wider than the fuselage and enables you to twist it move it in and out giving a good coating on the entire length of the tube and it also means that you're not going to get any glue on the inside of the tube which will foul up the joining tube later on and once the glue is set simply cut the tube flush for the motor mount what I've done is built up a layer of balsa around 20 millimeters from the front edge and also added some corner pieces in to fill in that round section which is exactly where the spinner is going to go now what I need to do is sand out a little bit of space to allow the motor to go in and then it'll be on to the next step you can see here I've sanded the inside of the fuselage round I've also put a thin layer of balsa on the inside that's parallel to the front but back a few mil and that'll give the motor mount itself something to rest against so it doesn't get pushed back into the fuselage one little thing to remember is the wires coming out of the bottom of the motor you need to gouge out a little bit here to give them enough room you can see here the finished motor mount the holes on the outside are just to give the epoxy something to grip to the holes on the inside are of course for the motor itself to be attached to and also the other holes are just to lighten it a bit and it goes in just like this nice snug fit like that to get the fuselage matching the spinner accurately you need to temporarily install the motor mount with a motor on it that way you can put the spinner on and sand and shape the fuselage to match now for that process I'm actually using a smaller diameter 28 millimeter motor purely because the standard radian motor only fits coming in from the back it won't fit in from the front due to the wires sticking out the bottom you can see here that I finished shaping the fuselage it's turned out quite nice and you can see there the teardrop shape that I was after here's the wing rod going in nice and tight fit this little dot here is actually the wing locator to make one of those obviously just mark it in the right spot and that is actually the female side of a standard motor connector just like the other side of this makes a nice and tight connector and it's ideal for the wing locator super easy to slide on with this wing locating method as you can see it just locks in place nicely there it's had its final sand now everything's nice and smooth the wing blends in nicely to the fuselage all I have to do now is cut the hatch and it'll be ready for covering the hatch is all cut out now one thing I also add to the inside of the fuselage is a little lip that gives something for the hatch itself to rest on a little tab at the front to lock the front in that little slot is for the latch mechanism itself when you cut this front to back edge I'll use a Stanley knife cut it on a 45 degree angle for the cross cut I'll use one of these little saw blades and you can see like this even without the latch mechanism it's very firm a very secure fit servo holes have been cut with the servos temporarily mounted that allows me to mark where I need to run these leads and remove enough material so that they sit flush with the edge the electronics I'll be using are a stock radian motor a turn G plush 18 amp speedy a thousand milliamp three cell lipo two HXT 900 servos for the servos they're running on common power lines 
that way it's eliminating the need and the weight for two of the servo leads themselves okay guys this is it here ready for its first flight you can see at the back there we've got the control surfaces just offset so you can see where they pivot here's a look at the covering job how that ended up it's all nice and smooth and of course the front end I've got a Aeronaut cam 10 by 4 prop on it and we're ready for the first flight here's the control test and right up I might just do a, a chuck without a without motor okay <laughs> That's floating like anything. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to need much motor, mate. Slowly, doesn't it? Beautiful. Turn to the left. Bird turn to the left. Could say so. It seems to be behaving itself fairly well. I'm not, I'm not having to struggle with it. Uh, I guess I'll just try landing. I'll start.